What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, December 26th, and with the holidays behind us and the coldest days of the year still to come, it may feel like winter is only just beginning. But in reality, we are already halfway to spring, and we will be transplanting out our cool weather crops into our gardens before we know it. That's why on today's video, I'm going to share with you 25 different veggies that you can start from seed right now in January, so you can have your transplants ready to go out into your garden in late winter, early spring. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. I'm located in Zone 8B, North Carolina, and all of the vegetables that I'm featuring in this video, I'm starting from seed right now for transplant out into my garden. And for the overwhelming majority of you, these generalized dates will work for you. However, you may need to adjust them a few weeks on either end depending on how much warmer or cooler your climate is. So for those of you, for example, that are significantly north of me, you may need to start your transplants a few weeks behind me. So keep that in mind. This is a general guideline for your information. And of course, if you are in a significantly colder climate than I'm in, consider building some of these hoop house structures either over your raised beds or your earth bed gardens and put some row covers over them. They will dramatically assist you in gardening in cooler weather. And I'll drop a link down in the video description that is a playlist on how I build these structures in about an hour's worth of time. Veggies numbers one through three that you should start right now from seed in January are your day length sensitive alliums, and that includes onions, shallots, and leeks. Now your onions and shallots in this case are extremely sensitive to the length of the days. The day length is what triggers proper bulbing. I'm including leeks in this list just because they grow the exact same. They enjoy the same environmental conditions. Leeks are not day length sensitive, but that's why I'm throwing them into the same pot of veggies. Now I will explain to you exactly what I mean by day length sensitive. We primarily grow onions and shallots for the bulbs. That is what we want to harvest. And the thing that tells the onions and shallots when it's time to start forming a bulb is actually the length of the day. And because of that, onions are classified into three different types, short day, intermediate day, and long day. And as the names indicate, a short day onion will begin bulbing with less daylight than a long day onion. Now during the winter time, the length of the day really starts to get to us. And we know that places like Florida have longer days in the winter than places like Maine. However, in the summertime, it's actually reversed. Every location on earth throughout a calendar year averages exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. However, places that are closer to the equator have longer winter days, but shorter summer days. It all averages out. Whereas places at high latitudes have very long days in the summer and very short days in the winter. So for that reason, in Southern areas of the United States, you actually grow short day onions. In Northern areas of the United States, you grow long day onions. And in the intermediate zones, you grow intermediate day onions. So because I basically live on the North Carolina, South Carolina border, I grow primarily short day onions, I can sort of get away with an intermediate day. So make sure that no matter where you live, you purchase the correct varieties of onions. Now shallots are mostly all long day, but I still have had pretty good success growing them here in North Carolina. The key to getting perfect onions and shallots that bulb properly, that develop those nice big bulbs, is all going to come down to timing because you need the mechanism for bulb growth to trigger right when you're at the longest days of the year. So you have to time out planting your onion transplants so they're ready to begin bulbing when the days are very long, and that's going to be May and June primarily. So for that reason, now is when I start my onion transplants from seed because I want them ready to go as nice, well-developed, strong onion transplants right around either the last week of February or the first week of March. If I plant my transplants out, too late in the spring, they will miss that window and they will start bulbing when the days are no longer at maximum length and I will get inferior bulbing. What you see right here are approximately six week old leek transplants. So these are almost to the point where I'm about ready to transplant them out into my garden. Now, like I said, leeks we harvest for the greens, they don't bulb. So it doesn't really matter when you plant leeks out into your garden, but for your onions and shallots, anything you want to harvest the bulb of the allium, you 
really have to nail the timing. These are almost ready to go out into my garden. You want them to be about eight weeks old, eight weeks after germination, in order for you to actually plant them out. So for that reason, when you start your onion seeds around January 1st, they're generally ready to go out into the garden around March 1st. So play with that timing a little bit, depending on your unique location. But here in North Carolina, that is what I've generally found works best for me. Veggies numbers four through 11 are brassica transplants, and that includes broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, collard greens, mustard greens, and bok choy or pak choy. Brassicas can be very tricky to grow. They don't do well with very hard freezes and can take damage, but they can also begin bolting on you when temperatures routinely eclipse the 60 degree Fahrenheit mark or warmer. So for that reason, it's best that we grow our brassicas from transplant so we can put out fairly large plants into our garden as soon as the weather allows. If we plant them from seed directly into our garden, a lot of times by the time they finally germinate and take off, it will be too warm out to harvest them and they will bolt on us before they're ready. So for that reason, the easiest way I've found to grow them is to start them in the dead of winter as transplants. So I have very large transplants ready to go out into my garden in the middle to late winter. And then I put them under some type of hoop house structure like that to keep the hard frost off of them. That way they can flourish and continue to grow. And I can harvest them in the early spring before it gets much too warm for them and they flower and go to seed on me. Not all brassicas are created equal. For example, kale is some of the most cold hardy of any of the plants that I grow into my garden. So are the mustard greens that you see in the rear over there. And they are also much less likely to bolt. So I find these to be more cold tolerant and heat tolerant, which gives me more flexibility. But things like broccoli are very sensitive to temperatures. I have to grow them underneath frost cloth to keep the hard freezes off of them. And we had a very warm Christmas weekend. And as you can see, because we had a few 70 degree days the heads are starting to separate on me and some are actually flowering so with broccoli cauliflower and in some ways cabbage you have to be more careful with them and you have to be very mindful of your temperatures so timing is everything when it comes to growing these plants veggies numbers 12 through 19 are cold hardy greens that love being direct sown and they include broccoli rob also known as rapini arugula also known as rocket spinach watercress hardy leaf lettuces, radicchio, cilantro, and parsley. Now, similar to the brassicas I just told you should be grown from transplant in the previous list, these plants are also quite sensitive to warm temperatures and they will bolt but some of them give you the flexibility of allowing to be direct sowed. And that is because these have a much lower days to maturity. So even if you direct sow these in most climates, you will still be able to get a pretty decent harvest before they bolt on you. But that being said, things like your parsley or your radicchio or your cilantro or your spinach that I'm holding right here, all of these things can be sown as transplants if you wish. So you can start these indoors and then transplant them out into the garden when the weather is appropriate. However, something like broccoli rob or arugula, you should only plant these directly in the garden. They will not grow well as transplants because they're sown in rows and you will harvest them kind of like a cut and come again fashion where you'll just take out some scissors and then you'll clip them about two inches off the soil line and then you'll bring them in and harvest them. Something like your hardy lettuces, like red leaf lettuces, you could either grow some of these as heads or as rows. That is up to you. The lettuce that you see right here is the new red fire variety that I just showed you the seed packet of. These types of lettuces can either be sown as rows and you can harvest them like small leaf lettuces or you could space them out more and harvest them as medium sized heads. As you can see, I planted them pretty close together. They were grown directly directly as seed. So I gave myself the flexibility to either harvest them as medium sized heads or as cut and come again. Because they're doing so well here in my garden, I've decided I'm going to let them grow as large as possible into heads. But that's my own personal opinion and you can plant them as you wish depending on what you desire. And veggies 20 through 25 that you should sow right now are your root vegetables like carrots, beets, radishes, turnips, rutabagas, and Swiss chard. The general rule when it comes to growing root vegetables is you don't want to plant them as transplants. Always direct sow them. Yes, it is technically feasible in some cases to transplant them, especially if you use something like a contained peat pellet, 
but overwhelmingly they will do a lot better being direct sown. If you transplant them, you will take high losses and at the very least there will be a lot of transplant shock. Roots really want to grab hold, so if you're growing a root vegetable, always direct sow them. Now the one exception to this rule is Swiss chard. Swiss chard is not technically a root vegetable, but I included them in with the root vegetables because the seed pod is almost exactly like that of a beet. In fact, if you plant Swiss chard and beets next to each other, you may not even be able to tell which is which. In fact, what you see right here is a blend of Swiss chard and beets. Can you tell the two apart? Because I can't just looking at it. The only reason why I can tell them apart is because I actually labeled the back row here as chard. So this is all chard behind here, and this is a later planting of chard behind here, whereas in the front here, these are actually my beet plants. But just looking at them, they're almost identical, and the seeds are almost identical as well. Then right in front of my beets and chard, I have my carrots that are just starting to germinate. They took about two weeks to germinate thanks to the very chilly weather and the short days overall. So that's why it's so important to get these into the ground earlier than you think. Because the days are so short and the sun is so weak this time of year, everything takes a little bit longer. So it's generally speaking better to be a little bit early than a little bit late. As long as your ground is not frozen, you can sow most root veggies. And if you live at very high latitudes where everything grows very slowly this time of year, consider radishes. They will germinate in only about three to five days, even when it's chilly out, and they are some of the fastest growing things in your garden. A lot of times they're ready from seed to harvest in only about 30 days. And that right there are 25 different veggies that you can start from seed in January. Now, remember, this is not an exhaustive list of everything that you can grow. This is everything I'm growing right now. I didn't put every single possible thing on this list. There are things like green onions or escarole or endive or dill or or a ton of cold hardy Asian greens that I'm really not all that familiar with. This is just something to basically get you started and point you in the right direction. Also, this doesn't include all zones. Again, I'm in zone eight, so this is appropriate for me and a lot of bordering zones. But if you're in zone nine or warmer, there's probably a whole bunch of warm season crops that you can probably start right now that it's just too early for me to begin those things. And of course, if you're in a really cold zone, you may have to delay a couple of weeks and you may also want to consider building some of these hoop houses over your raised beds in order to keep things warm and get a huge jump start on the growing season. You can increase your zone basically several zones when you start building some of these cheap little structures to play with. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you have any questions about any of the crops that I mentioned in this video, please ask them down in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer your questions. If you want to know any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand that video description, click on the Amazon link, and you'll see everything I use in real life in my garden. And while you're there, check out my Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, Merry Christmas. Come on, we gotta give you your presents. Come on, come on, come on, come. Yes. Yeah, Dale, come on, get your gift. They've been sitting here all morning, but Dale won't take them unless he's invited. Yeah. What you got over there, buddy? Well, he hasn't lost his touch, Britt. He is just as good as ever, possibly better than ever. And he has a boot because he has a little infection on his nail, but he'll be better. Oh! What did Dale get? Let me get? see, Dale. Let me see. Oh, I think that's a jerky. A jerky oh, tender. chicken you want jerky. A jerky he wants chicken you jerky. Want a jerky tender? Here you go. Jerky for our jerky. Yay! Jerky for our turkey. Merry Christmas, Dale. We have so many more presents to open. Dale, are you enjoying oh! Dad's present? It's the oh, whole Kong it. family. It's the whole family. Mommy picked it out and said, hey, oh, that looks uh, like a Dale gift. You may have saw it. Dale, come on, get another one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness gracious. Whoa. <laughs> I don't think you can take the whole box outside, Dale. Oh, boy. What a mess.